and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now on page 95 with our next canticle, Te Deum Laudamus, You Are God, together. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became a man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Today, as I mentioned earlier, we celebrate Peter and Paul, apostles and martyrs. The confession of Peter, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, is commemorated on 18 January, and the conversion of Paul on the approach to Damascus a week later on the 25th of January. On the 29th of June, we commemorate the martyrdoms of both apostles. The date is the anniversary of a day around 258 under the Valerian persecution when they were believed to be the remains of two apostles were both moved temporarily to prevent them from falling into the hands of the persecutors. The scriptures do not record the deaths of Peter or Paul, or indeed any of the apostles except for James, the son of Zebedee, in Acts 12, verse 2. But they clearly anticipated, and from an early date it has been said that they were martyred at Rome at the command of the emperor Nero and buried there. As a Roman citizen, Paul would have probably had been beheaded with a sword. It is said of Peter that he was crucified head downward. The present church of St. Peter in Rome replaces earlier churches built on the same site, going back to the time of the Emperor Constantine, in whose reign a church was built there on what is believed to be the burial site of St. Peter. Excavations under the church suggest that the belief is older than Constantine. St. Augustine writes in his 295th sermon, Both apostles share the same feast day, for these two men were one, and even though they suffered on different days, they were as one. Peter went first and Paul followed, and so we celebrate this day made holy for us by the apostles' blood. Let us embrace what they believed, their life, their labors, their suffering, their preaching, and their confession of faith. But above all, they martyred them. The Lord be with you and also with you. Brothers and sisters, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you by their martyrdom, grant that your church, instructed by their teaching and example, and knit together in unity by your Spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, which is Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now a collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you by the honor of your name. Amen. We will now pause and bring our own needs and intercessions and intentions before the Lord and beg his mercy and indulgence and in some cases, forgiveness. Let us pray today for the victims of addiction and those who care for them. O oh, blessed Lord, you ministered to all who came to you. Look with compassion upon all who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove from them the fears that beset them. Strengthen them in the work of their recovery. Walk with them, be with them. And to those who care for them, give patience and understanding and persevering love. Amen. And now a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace, especially remembering Betty Trawick, Leo Tyson, Jane Clark, and Jane Edwards, and David Davis, and Joe Clarkson. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. O holy altar, I leave you in peace and I hope to return to you in peace. I do not know if I will be able to return to offer another sacrifice. Therefore, I hope that the gifts that I receive from you will be for the forgiveness of my faults and the remission of my sins, so that I may stand without guilt or shame before the throne of Christ. O holy altar, I do not know if I will be able to return to offer another sacrifice. I leave you in peace. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Go out and change the world. Make it a better place. Leave it better than you found it this morning when you woke up. We will see you again tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning is Wednesday, the last day of the month, June the 30th. So please be here at 10 o'clock as we continue the daily office. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you then.